Hello everyone, welcome back in today's tutorial on Informatica MDM. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn another topic about provisioning tool. So far, we have seen how to create root node, how to create a reference entity or referential entity, how to create business entity, etc. Now, in today's tutorial, we are going to see how to create triggers in provisioning tool. What are these triggers and why we need to configure? So the triggers are nothing but the events which occur in the application, particularly Entity 360 application. So we can, we can call it added application. So whenever we do a creation of new record, so create creation is an event, update itself is, a, is an event or delete is an event. So those are the events occurs and we have to configure the trigger for these events. Whenever any user update a record or delete a record, that user should have that access for that triggers. So for example, data, if we have the role called as a data steward in MDM hub, so that data steward should have the permissions to these triggers and that is the reason we need to create this trigger so that data steward can achieve the activities such as add, update or delete etc. There are some other activities also or the events involved which we will see shortly. So what are the things we need? Of course in order to do the demo we have created some base objects for example we are going to use the party base object. Then we have uh, also created user the name of user is James. Uh, James as a man James manager then we have created roles the very first role we are going to use here is nothing but the data steward role so this is more important role for us we have given the permission for the base object uh, the packages the hierarchy component etc so not necessarily we have to give the all the permissions but for the feasibility to achieve the more operations we have given the all the permissions to this role of course as per your business requirement you can customize these roles then inside the role users and groups inside data steward role we have added the james manager user these are the very important things we need to take care before configuring the provisioning tool for the create or update event so once we are done with this configuration in the MDM hub side, so we will go to the provisioning tool. If you remember, accessing provisioning tool is very simple. It's a local host 880 and the provisioning word and then forward slash. Here we have to give the, the admin user which will have the control to the provisioning tool. Select the schema. So right now we have the two schemas, MDM sample and CMXORS. Just select the CMXORS, click OK. and it will connect to the same XRS. So we got connected. Go to the business entity. I think so far you come to know how to create a business entity. So in order to configure added application, very first thing required is business entity. So make sure go to this business entity, go to the modeling and in the modeling, we have created one business entity called as a person. This person entity has a base a base object as a CBO party label is person and name is person and this entity has a state management enable we just simply added few fields the fields such as first name party name and the last name if you click on the first name we can see the first name is added it is of type string and it is uh, first name so if you want to add any other field just click on this field click on create button and from URL you can select the common J it is of type string if you want any other type such as integer or the date or boolean you can select appropriate I'm selecting string and from this I'm um, uh, column this is this column is from the party table so let me select SSN and I will give here SSN as a label is it read only required you can select the appropriate searchable if you have the smart search then select this option but as this is a simple demo I'm just uh, not selecting 
so we have added the column okay so these are the columns available for this business entity nothing uh, other than this we have not created any other thing in this business entity so we need this business entity before configuring the triggers now go to, in order to configure the triggers we have to go to the business entity go to task and in the task you can see the multiple option options such as template task types triggers so even if you are not using the active or so the task management or any bpm engine we need to configure the triggers so that the user can add or update the record through added application or the entity 360 application so select this trigger create a trigger so you can give any name to this trigger so i have given the name send for approval whenever you create the send for approval it will generate a tree view as like our entity a business entity so in that tree view you will see the two options event and role inside event we can add the events so far i have added create b and update b let's try to add a new event so this is the trigger i am creating name of trigger is send for approval and inside the trigger we are adding event and what are the roles which will be having the control on this event so far we have created uh, we have created two events Cre create b that is business entity update business entity let's try to add another event in order to add the another event let's uh, select the event click on the create button when you click the create button the new event option will be available from the drop down you can select the appropriate event like match b merge b or unmerge b so let's select merge b so when all the record are match the the p the person who is available inside this role can also do the merge of record so that is the merge event so let's apply it when you apply that merge event will be available here now suppose you want to apply the create b update b and merge b for a data steward role then go to the select go to the role and when you select role it will ask the create role so you can create that for example for business user i am creating and apply it so i created the role inside that role you will see the business entity select that business entity and click on the create button so as we know we created the business entity and the name of business is entity is person so select that person also and click on apply so we actually created two roles or we have assigned this create update and merge events to two roles first is other data steward role which have the person entity access also we created business users role which have the access to the person entity so both the data steward and person business users will have access to person business entity and they can perform create update and merge of record once we are done with this once we configure the events once we configure the roles so we have to publish this changes to mdm hub so i hope you got clear how to create triggers we just created one trigger <coughs> and inside one trigger we added the multiple events we also added the multiple roles so as many as you can add roles which are available in the mdm hub so make sure these roles present in the mdm hub once we are done with this let's publish this change in order to publish this change at the right hand side we can see the publish button click on that and what will happen what are the configuration we have made so far those are not available right now in the mdm hub so whenever you click the publish button it will first validate all the changes which will be published to mdm hub after validation is successful the changes will be published to the mdm hub if there is any error in this component we need to fix that otherwise the changes will not be reflected in the mdm hub configuration so when i say the mdm hub what 
it actually internally goes to the database tables. What are the tables involved? There are multiple tables involved. The very first table I would say is a C repos COCS config where this actual objects will be updated. So you might see some timestamp here. So if the objects are updated, then this is created and the last update date will be updated accordingly. Right now you can see this task is, uh, this config type of task is got updated. The other two important tables are uh, component instance and component setting. So those are also get affected or the updated whenever we publish the change. So right now you can see it is just uh, validate that our change. So it is going to add the task event sent for approval for the merge entity. We have the person, uh, we added the new field SSN. Uh, we also added the business users for the uh, new role. And we added a uh, business user task also. These are the changes going to the MDM hub. Confirm it. If there is nothing wrong, then it will be published automatically. It will not create any uh, issues while publishing. So you can see no validation error and click on this publish. So right now we are good to publish it. Once it is published, the next important thing we have to do, people normally forget to do this. Otherwise, if um, and that is nothing but the validating ORS in MDM hub. If you don't validate the ORS, the latest changes you will not able to see if you come back to this provisioning tool. So it is the home page for the provisioning tool. Now, as I said, our the next next task is validating the ORS. Go to this and select. Click OK. So this will validate the ORS and once it is successfully validated, we will we'll conclude that we are able to add the trigger. So if you go to the uh, provisioning tool back, you will be able to see those triggers available. So the validation will should not take a long time. So it, it is uh, done. So we can log into the provisioning tool again. Let me go to login. Select the ORS, that is normal process. Click on the business entity, go to the task, go to the triggers, and you will see the send for approval trigger with the, all the events and with the, all the roles available. So this is very simple but very important step for provisioning tool and that is nothing but creating triggers. I hope this simple tutorial help you to understand how to create triggers in IDD uh, or in the provisioning tool. This is very important step before going to create the IDD application through provisioning tool. So I hope you like this video. If you like this video, do not forget to subscribe my channel. And if you have any questions or queries about provisioning tool, you can mention in the comment section of this video. Thank you again and have a nice time.